Okay, I'm going to start uh, since we're running a bit behind. And um, thanks for coming to my talk. Um, I actually found the previous talk quite interesting about Kubernetes operators because uh, um, we actually have an operator framework. And um, if you're not a Golang programmer, if you want to find an easier way to do that, you can actually use Ansible to write Kubernetes operators. If you want to know more information about that, I will be at the Red Hat booth after this. However, my talk today is not technical in nature. Um, so uh, it's a little bit more about community management and also conducting an orchestra. So I hope you find this interesting. And uh, my name is Carol Chen. I work for Red Hat. And uh, I support a number of upstream projects as listed here. So. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is my third time at OpenStack Open Infra Summit, but the first time speaking, so I'm really excited. OK, about me. Since this is a lightning talk, I'll keep it short. Uh, you can find me at Cybat on Twitter, on WeChat, on Freenode IRC, and many social networks. So that's my nickname I go by. If you want to more, know more information, just search for that. Okay, and uh, I, I put this cut common time. If you if you know a bit about music, that's like a, usually a notation to say you know keep things going faster because again this is a short talk, so I'm gonna try to get get this get through this as fast as possible. All right. So what does a community manager or a conductor do? I'm um, just curious, by a show of hands, who has, who's, who has played in an orchestra or a band or some kind of a music group before? No one? Okay. All right, there's one over there. I myself, I, pl I'm, I play in an amateur orchestra in Finland. I'm a percussionist. And uh, who has, well, if, if you have not played in one, have, has, has anybody conducted a music group, perhaps? Oh, cool. All right. That's, that's very nice, very interesting. And who has um, community management experience or kind of... All right. <laughs> My partner over there from, from RDO, community manager. So I think um, people who see conductors on stage, if, especially if you're not familiar with music and orchestras, you see them waving their hands a lot, conducting the orchestra, and you wonder, what is it that they're doing? Just flapping their arms or you know, waving the stick. Similarly, a lot of times I get the question, so what do you do as a community manager? What's like, how do you define your role? And it's not as clear cut as, you know, if you say I'm an engineer, it's very clear, you know, what, what, what you're doing. And of course, you can elaborate on the topic or the project you're, do, you're working on. But when it comes to community management, there, there still tends to be this kind of question mark about what's the role of this person. So I found this also like uh, I actually borrowed this from somebody else's uh, slides. I've attended a, a previous talk about community management, and I think this kind of describes the ambiguity and confusion about um, our role as a community manager. Like, what is it exactly that we do? I will have to say I really face palm a lot. Well, not really, but it's part of my job sometimes. So I think both are. Um, often misunderstood, but a lot of times what you see, um, what you don't see is a lot of the work that go, goes behind. So the, the kind of value that the community manager brings to the project and the community is often behind the scenes. The similarly, for a conductor, is a lot of times before the concert or the performance when he works with the orchestra that actually brings the, the, the kind of the, the main value of, of the his work to the orchestra. So um, a lot of times, if you are just a solo player, a musician, you have a soloist, you don't need a conductor to conduct just one person. Or sometimes even a small group, like a quartet or something, four persons. Again, it's something a bit simpler. You, don't, you may not necessarily need a conductor. But um, as the orchestra grows, or as the group grows, Similarly, as the project grows, um, things start to happen. Think that the dynamics change. When you have a bunch of people coming together, even if they're all experts individually, you will need to bring balance and kind of um, 
management and collaboration between the people. And it's not just saying, hey, you know, throw them together in a room and things will just happen. So that there's some things involved. And also, like when you have community versus different companies working together, it's almost like inviting a, a, a guest player to an orchestra. So if you're not familiar with each other, how do you bring together the communication, the, the um, exchange of ideas and everything? What, what is the, you, you have to be the glue that kind of makes things, these, all these things get um, connect together. So how does this happen? As I said, was saying behind the scenes, when I was in March, uh, when I was in Singapore this year in March, <coughs> I had a chance to go to an open rehearsal, which are really cool. If, even if you don't have a chance to go to the actual concerts, if you have a chance to go to a rehearsal, that's where you can see a lot of so-called behind the scenes happening, where the conductor interacts with a guest player, in this case, uh, Ray Chen. Uh, Andrew Lydon was the conductor. And um, so you get to notice the things that they work on, what are the um, kind of the challenges in the pieces or the where, where they kind of have to sync together a bit more than uh, other places. So, uh, of course, it, it may not be the perfect polished piece that you hear at the end uh, at, during the performance, but it gives you a, more of an insight about how the orchestra actually works. So similarly, for community for projects, a lot of time, you know, like um, at events or some kind of a release thing, you have the final product, which is brand shiny new, but you know, behind the scenes, a lot of things have to go work to make that happen. So, um, and um, also community managers tend to have different backgrounds. Rain over there, who was, has been waving and saying she has experience in music and community management. Uh, she has a more technical background, probably, than I do. Uh, some people were previously part of the engineering team. Some perhaps came from marketing. I know community managers who has English, you know, a, a major in English for some reason. And maybe they were in documentation or design. So there are many. Um, possibilities to participate, so also become part of the community. So is there one thing that um, is like, when you talk about you know, mastering something, is there one thing that uh, a community ma manager should be a master of? Um, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, Andrew Litton himself is a pianist. He, uh, he's a very good, uh, accomplished solo uh, piano player, but um, he also, then he went into conducting. Um, the next one, let's say, last week I was in Lyon for Open Source Summit. I had a chance to catch the orchestra, National Orchestra of Lyon. And um, Giovanni Radivo, he's actually, whoa, that was not what happened during the concert, but um, he himself is a violinist and he was conducting and playing at the same time. So sometimes that happens too. Like I said, sometimes uh, the community manager could be the engineer or something. So is, is there a certain skill set that, no, do you have to be a violinist or do you have to be a pianist? Do you have to be an engineer to be a community manager? Do you have to be a certain instrument um, player to be a certain, to be a conductor? Um, I think a lot of times the person has to be good in many areas. Doesn't have to be expert in all the areas, but you have to really kind of learn a lot of things. Like we work with the engineers a lot. We uh, definitely do a lot of events, so we are pretty good at uh, event planning. We um, you know, know, know enough about marketing and communications because we are spreading the message of the project. Um, you know, translations, design, what have you. There's different uh, emphasis depending on the project. So a lot of times we either know a bit of everything or we ha kind of have to know who, who to go for for, the set for these different areas. So how do you kind of keep track of all this and get people together and help yourself so that you are not overloaded? 
sometimes we try to take on too much as well because you know we are kind of expected to know a bit of everything. So I think um, I hope I still have time left. Yeah. So if I say we have we are kind of like a jack of all trades, if there's one thing I think we need to be a master of, I think it's this communication, which a big part of it. I always say communication is two ways. It's not just you telling people stuff, but it's also about the, the receiving end, which is the listening part. And that's, that's such a huge thing that people sometimes tend to overlook or miss when they talk about communication. So you have to be able to listen to find out what are the areas that's needing something. You may not be able to do everything, but you can see who needs help, who needs more attention, like in an orchestra, sometimes you know, this, this, this section needs more work, that section needs more balance, and so on. Similarly, in a project, you, can, you want to bring everything together in harmony, and um, listening is like a big part of making that happen. And um, this, this talk was supposed to be more like, like a longer session, um, so I would have gone more into like, like the tips and processes of how to listen, how to collaborate, and um, hopefully maybe next time we can do a, like a BOF or a panel discussion.